Welcome back, and, and when we last left you, uh, we were looking at how to improve our synthetic well tie to the seismic data by instead of utilizing a basic wavelet, a Ricker wavelet in this case, so we're going to extract a wavelet from the seismic data and apply that to the synthetic to see how that improves our well tie. So recalling back, we have a uh, correlation coefficient down here of, of 0.02, which is horrible and visually we can look at it. We know we've tied the top and the bottom of the coal bed um, to the seismic data. That's fine. And we've identified a range shown in red, okay, uh, for which we're going to look at the frequency content of the seismic data and use that as the basis for uh, a wavelet that we will then apply to the seismic data. So when we change, look at that window shown in red, this is the frequency content down here and this is uh, rough we haven't done any kind of smoothing anything like that uh, other thing to point out the the window again for the frequency content we can click and drag it when we let go you'll see the up you'll see the content change probably a bigger change if we you know screw the oop, hit the, the top or bottom time that type of thing but we're focusing on the area within the cold beds right now that's the where we want to look to tie. So this is our frequency content. So now how do we get a wavelet that uh, will have content similar to what's in the seismic data applied to the synthetic? So we're going to go to our well tie um, option at the top uh, because we're looking at uh, improving our tie with the seismic data. And we're going to go to extract wavelet. Okay, now this is going to pop up. It's going to confirm, do you want to do it over this currently specified frequency content range? And you could change that if you want, but we'll leave that the same. And then it comes up with this new window. Now, there's a lot going on in this window, so I'm going to take a few moments to go through it. So we're going to focus on this amplitude frequency plot here with uh, the red line, the blue shaded area, and the blue dots. Um, and so what that is, that's the frequency content. We're taking an autocorrelation, in this case, over 120 milliseconds, and we can change that. Um, again, no truncation, and using that autocorrelation to determine what the uh, frequency content is within the seismic data. And again, the red line is what's in the seismic data. The blue squares are control points for defining our wavelet, and we want those to uh, give us a nice representation uh, based on that red guiding line that we have shown there. Um, and then once we have that, we generate a wavelet. And an example of that wavelet is shown below. It's a zero phase wavelet. Change the number of points and the sample rate. And we can change uh, the, the point sample rate, phase angle, and all that later on as we apply it to the synthetic. But as for right now, again, the red line is what's in our seismic data. Uh, and the blue represents what's uh, generated by the wavelet. Now the autocorrelation we've, we've by default put in there 120 milliseconds. The, we have a min and a max so you can't go crazy, but you'll notice if I increase the maximum autocorrelation, I'm increasing this here, but also notice the red curve changes and it becomes a little bit more uh, in line with what's down there and you know a lot of uh, little noise and the high frequency junk that it's picking up there. So let's go back to 120, which uh, is usually a nice number. We can see the autocorrelation uh, showing up here. And again, the bulk of the amplitude is, uh, you know, within those first 50 milliseconds or so. So anyway, we have that curve. Now, as I change this, obviously you've seen the red guiding curve change. The blue does not change uh, because that's generated by the wavelet. And we're using the red to help guide us for that. Now we can tr truncate um, the autocorrelation uh, to smooth out our red guiding curve. And right now we have no truncation applied to it. We can uh, use a trapezoidal method. Now you notice when I click that, watch the red line. as so we go back and forth. It's smoothing that out. And I can do a triangular or a hamming method. Um, and it smooths out that uh, red guiding curve. I haven't touched the wavelet yet. So how do we change the wavelet? The wavelet's defined by these blue points here. By default, they're put in um, about every three to five uh, hertz. We can add a point very easily. Uh, this is our, our control point toolbar right here. We can add a point, delete a point, or reset it. So again, 
the red curve is our guiding point. So right away we notice if we look here, this point should be moved up along the guide. And let's move it up there. Okay. As we move these points, it's generated a new wavelet, which would be reflected down below. Sometimes the changes are significant, sometimes they're not. Um, and then determining the frequency content produced by that wavelet, and that's the area in the blue shaded. And I see this one's off a bit as well. Now I can do that through all the points, but there's also a nice handy little tool that says reset specified points. And what that will do is as the red guiding curve changes, uh, when I hit reset, all these blue, the, the frequency will stay the same, but the amplitude will change to more, adhere a little more closely. So I'm going to hit reset, and you'll see that those occur. So this is really, really nice uh, tied to it. Now, again, the level of granularity that you, that you want to get into is, is strictly up to you. If I decide that I wanted to do a trapezoidal one, you'll see it filter. I'm going to get a little uh, bump here, about 62 hertz. Well, for the wavelet to understand that and understand is I can hit the reset points and do that. If I don't like that and I want to add a point, I click on the add point, come here, add a new point. All that type of uh, activity is uh, quite easy to do. Now, I'm going to assume that this is the wavelet that we want to apply here. Don't worry about the number of points and all that. We can change that as we go. And again, we do this with zero, at zero phase. So now I'm going to hit accept. And that will, A, complete the extraction uh, process. And then what we do is we can give the wavelet a name. So we can save it. Uh, we can export it for another system. And we'll, when we use it, uh, we'll know where it came from and, um, and uh, the, the data um, from the, the seismic data that was the source and what range of traces and time. So a default name for the wavelet pops up here. And I uh, can see that it's the SegWi file name, the time range, the trace name. You could type in whatever you want. You could, you know, whatever name you want. But it's something good that would identify uh, the, the source of this wavelet. Now, we're going to notice a couple things here. Let's go back to our, before we hit accept here, our correlation coefficient of uh, about, 0.02 using that 40 hertz Richter wavelet. Now I'm going to say I want to use the wavelet from the seismic data. I'm going to hit accept and it's going to pop up and says do you want to apply this wavelet to the current synthetic? Um, which is of course we're going to end it. Now we look at what we have at 40 hertz. I'm going to hit yes. Okay, That changed it and my correlation coefficient increased just a little bit. A couple other things that uh, you might want to do to improve the correlation coefficient is change the phase of the wavelet, um, stretch and squeeze, which we'll get into. Or the next thing we're going to do is what is the impact of multiples? Um, I'm going to tell you that this seismic data in, in this well where we identified all those thin coal beds, uh, that's prime real estate for uh, internal multiples. And we're going to be able to see very quickly uh, a uh, how a synthetic with internal multiples ties in with the seismic compared to one that is just a conventional primary. So we're going to stop it at this point, but that kind of gives you an overview of how to uh, extract a wavelet from seismic data and apply it to that synthetic.